Hi there, Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome back to my shack and to another homebrew video. In fact, part two, really, um, of the video that I did last time on designing, building, tweaking uh, a bandpass filter. And do you remember last time, and thank you very much for everybody that watched uh, the last video, um, I built my bandpass filter for 15 meters. Um, was just a status report after that video um, I went and did exactly the same thing and built a bandpass filter for 10 meters uh, on the same little board um, I tested that tweaked it just the same got it working as I wanted it brilliant so then I turned my attention to how am I going to switch this hold on somebody might say that was paying careful attention didn't I say I was going to do an auto switching bandpass filter? Yes, I did. And in fact, I did actually build that. So what I'm talking about is one of these ones where you, you just tune, depending on where you tune with your rotary encoder, um, the, the appropriate bandpass filter just kind of clicks in. And I did it and it worked. But the problem is it was a bit awkward because if, if you imagine if you're down the bottom end of the 15 meter band and you just want to whip up to uh, 10 meters to see what's happening, you've got to tune all the way. And it's a big old band, you know, through to get to there. And even if you put the tuning increment to a megahertz, it was just a bit awkward. And I kind of pictured myself using this rig and thought, what's going to be the easiest? And to be honest, that's going to be a switch on the front of the rig and just switch it. You're in one band, switch it down, you're in another. So so I decided that I am actually going to use a switch. I'm still going to do all the switching um, uh, in the uh, microcontroller, but more about that as we as we get um, there. Uh, so so that's the thing. So I decided, right, I'm, I'm going to switch it. Now, you could just take some coax, you might think, from, from each of the filters and, and put them to a physical switch on the front and, you know... Um, that's not a very elegant solution uh, and also I don't like the idea of taking all your, your precious RF halfway round the rig um, to, to the front panel just to take it all the way round again um, and of course those pins on those uh, switches are very close together as well. There's all kinds of possibilities of, of RF leaking into somewhere where it's not supposed to be so, um, so I wasn't going to do that. Um, well, how am I going to do it? Well, there's different ways you can do it. The way I've chosen to do it, which is how I do pretty much all my switching, is to use one of these. A little 5 volt, cheap as chips, Songle relay, 5 pins, uh, single pole, double throw relay. Um, and uh, we're going to have a look at, at this, what this is, and how you use it. And I'm going to show you some experiments, uh, some simulations, and then finally the actual thing built uh, in use. Um, now, some of this is going to cover some pretty basic ground about what a relay is and how you use it. If you know all that, feel free just to skip through. Um, but I do it because I've got to be honest with you, when I first built my first transceiver, I'd never even heard of a relay, let alone knew what it did or how you wired it up, you know. So... If that's you, <laughs> then stay tuned uh, and hopefully it might get you started using these uh, very useful little devices. So, I uh, hope you enjoy. Well, welcome to the electromagnetic magic of the relay. So, here is that little Songle relay that I showed you. And you'll see, if you have a look here, a little inductor symbol here. And you can see that this little part of the switch seems to be closed and this bit is open. And uh, that's really helpful to know. Now effectively what a relay is, it, it's an electromagnet. And we probably all had a go at building these when we are kids and whatever, you know, wrapping wire around a, a, a screw and things. 
And when you apply electric current through a coil of wire, you develop a magnetic field. And, and that magnetic field, essentially, in the relay, pulls a little bit of metal from uh, one place to another and completes a circuit, and that's the switch. And in fact, what it actually does, it really two separate circuits. You've got the switching circuit, which are these two poles here, and uh, I'll show you more about this in a moment. And when you complete that circuit, that's when this switching circuit takes place. And let me show you what that looks like. So as it is at the moment, if we were to put some RF to this pin here, we've got two places that RF can go. You've got what's called the normally closed and the normally open pins. So normally closed is what it says. It's normally closed. In other words, the RF will come in here on the green and go all the way through to the pink because it just looks like a piece of wire you know? uh, uh, and there's electrical connectivity all the way through that. This will look like an open circuit right? because it is normally open and that's it. So there will be nothing here and all the signal will flow in through the green and through the relay and will appear on this pin here. And what happens is if you, you apply no power to your relay and connect it up, that's what you'll get. So how do we switch it then? Well, how we switch it is pretty simple. What we do is we apply, this is a five volt relay, so we put five volts or thereabouts on this port. It doesn't have to be that port. You can put five volts on this port if you want. There's no positive or negative ports yet. <laughs> there will be in a minute because of something we're going to do, but either one can serve as the, the VCC and as the ground. I'm talking to ground, this is going to be our ground. Okay, so now if you applied 5 volts and you grounded the other pin there, the relay would switch. But please don't just do this. And the reason why I say that is that when power is applied to the relay, the electric current flows through that coil, you generate this magnetic field. When the power stops, in other words, when you don't apply 5 volts to that pin, what happens is that that magnetic field collapses. But what we then get is a flow of current in the opposite direction. And when I say flow of current, it can be momentarily huge in terms of the voltages that actually develop. And that can cause a lot of damage to some of your sensitive circuitry, particularly semiconductors that you might have kind of downstream from this relay. So what I would always encourage people to do, whenever you're gonna use a relay, the first thing to do is to strap a diode in between those two pins a reverse polarized diode. So in other words, when the relay's operating, when you apply the five volts, that's fine. The diode is reverse polarized, so it's you know it's not gonna affect anything. But when the five volts is not applied, then any of the back EMFs, they're called, will flow through to ground and not damage at any of your circuitry. So it's really important. And that diode is, is referred to in different ways. It's sometimes called a, a flyback diode or a flywheel diode or a snubber diode. But that's what it does. It's to protect basically the rest of your circuit. So it's good to do that. Now, of course, once you put that diode in, you now do have positive and negative terminals because this one here has got to be the positive because of the, the orientation of the diode, and this one would, will be the negative. And that will do the switching. Right, now let's try and show you how the switching will occur. How it's usually done, certainly how I would usually do it, is you would take a physical switch and you would break this ground connection, because it's this ground connection, once you complete the connection and, and current can flow through, that will actually do the switching.
But if you can break the ground connection, you can control whether this relay is grounded or not, that will do the magic. So all we're going to do then is we're going to remove that wire. We're going to have a, a wire going from the, the ground pin of the relay um, to your switch and then just ground the switch. And now with this, once we switch this, you'll ground the relay and the switching action will happen. And you could actually do just this. You could do just this. The reason why I'm not just doing this and having a switch on the front and doing this as exactly as you can see it is that I want to do more than this. Because the, the problem is, is if I did this in my radio, sure enough, when I flip that switch, I would change bands. But that's all I'd do. You know, my VFO would still be set to give me a frequency in a certain band that wouldn't shift and so all I have done is change the bandpass filter but then I, I, there's the danger then I could end up transmitting with the wrong filter in I need to do more than that what I want to do is to yes yeah, swap the filter but I also want to swap what frequency I'm on as well uh, that I'm listening to and potentially transmitting on so that will mean using a microcontroller and in my case an Arduino Nano to actually do that and it's not difficult to do right this is the schematic of what I've built and in a moment I'm going to show you an LT Spice simulation so you can actually see what's happening effectively if we look at this over here so what we've got we've got the main DC power supply here which is supplying both the relays that's the red lead here and you'll see if we have a look at the relay exactly as I've said you've got the RF coming in is this black line the 10 meter RF connection is in green and the 15 meter RF is in purple and so you can see how those would be connected to your respective bandpass filters. You'll see I've got my diode, just a standard 1N 4148 reverse polarized over those uh, positive and negative terminals of the relay. But instead of just sticking a switch, uh, let me take this bottom one because there's not as many crossing wires, it's easy to see. So this is the ground pin, like I showed you before, of the relay. Instead of putting a physical switch there, we're going to use a transistor and we're going to use a transistor not as an amplifier but as a switch and so we know how a transistor works it will take a tiny amount of current here on the base and if enough current will flow on the base it will switch the, the transistor on and then current will then be able to flow between the collector and the emitter now note the emitter's grounded so that means all we need to get this transistor to switch on, and once it does switch on, of course, it will effectively ground the relay, which is what we want. All we need is just enough current to overcome that diode drop, really, the 600, 700 millivolts between the base emitter junction. And then jobs are good, right? We can switch it. So the way I do that is by connecting the nano pin so this represents one pin on my arduino nano through a 10k resistor because we want to knock that voltage right down and make sure we've got um, a very low current going in here now why am i doing that well why i'm doing that is because you couldn't just connect the relay up to the nano because these things draw about well 59 milliamps and we've got two of them right so that will never make for a happy microcontroller you will load it down well yeah it's way way off the chart so what we need is we need to take just enough as little as possible current draw from that arduino but will be enough to actually get the transistor to turn on and actually by using a 10k resistor that's fine and it draws very very little now in a moment we'll see a simulation of this and then I'm going to show you some actual practical examples of using this before I show you the real thing that I built 
So you will see here, this is my LT Spy simulation of what I ended up building. And just to try and explain what you're looking at. Now the relays, I've just modelled the relays as an 83 ohm resistor. And that's just because that will give me the appropriate amount of current flowing, which is what I'm actually interested in. I'm not bothered about the, the switching at the moment. I'm just looking at how what I built will affect the Arduino and whether, whether it's actually working or not. So similar kind of thing. So this is, will be the bias from the Arduino, which will be split then through two 10K resistors through the two NPN transistors. Both emitters are grounded and both collectors are going to the ground of the relay, which is being supplied by 5 volts. Now you'll see at the moment I've set the bias to zero. So in other words, there's no switching going on. And you'll see here, if I uh, just it so 0 volts, you'll see if I do this, so that's minus 10 pico amp. So basically there's no current flowing at all. And uh, that's the same if I, if I looked at this. Oh, look at that, minus 10 femto amps. Yeah, so no current is flowing in this circuit. That's good. But let's see, if I change this to 5 volts, so we've got 5 volts bias, and run this again now. Now, now let's look at this. So let's just check it's here. So first of all, yeah, so we've got 5 volts, which is going in. So let's look at this bottom one going through, what's the voltage here? So the voltage, 779 millivolts. So just enough voltage to overcome that base emitter junction. And if I see what's actually flowing, yeah, 59 milliamps. And if I check that here in this relay, yeah, 58.6. So we've got 59 milliamps there. What's flowing in this one? 59, yeah. Yeah, so in the main supply then, yes, 117.4, so which you'd expect because the current, you, you get 59 there, 59 there. Now, crucially, is what are we drawing here? Because this is working, this is great, but we don't want to be drawing too much power from the Arduino. We don't want to be overloading these transistors either. So 59 milliamps through each transistor is absolutely fine. Um, what are we drawing? Look at that. So we're drawing uh, 0.852 milliamps. So less than one milliamp is enough to open up these transistors, to ground the relays, and to do our switching. So that is brilliant. And so now let me show you some experiments that I did, just breadboarding this up first uh, before I show you the real thing uh, in all its glory. Okay, so I breadboarded, well, half of that schematic just to, to show you that it works. Um, so just to point out what we've got here. So over here, so this connection is the 5 volt from the main supply um, to what is now the positive terminal of the relay. Note the reverse polarised diode that I talked about a moment ago over between the positive and the negative. This is the, the negative or the ground terminal. I'm not bothering with any, any actual signals coming in at the minute because I just want to prove that it, it works. So the ground of the relay then is going down to the uh, transistor. It's going to the collector of the transistor. The emitter of the transistor is grounded by this little white uh, lead there and then the base pin is connected via this 10k resistor and that goes to this little red wire here and if I swing this around that's going to the separate bias control so that will be simulating um, well in my case an Arduino pin that will give five volts um, and through this um, uh, 10k resistor will we'll knock it down uh, and so it'll be just a tiny current going into the base, but that'll be enough to open up the transistor. And so current will flow between the collector and the emitter, and that will effectively ground the relay, uh, and it will click 
and uh, it'll switch. So um, let me just show you uh, the actual power supply, and this will probably be the easiest way of, um, of demonstrating this. So that's down here. So hang on a minute, let's just try and um, balance this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to switch on on this channel. Okay, so the left channel is the main power supply. Uh, now, if I switch on the right-hand supply, which it, it buzzes a bit, this one does. Now, have you seen now that on the left-hand channel, we've, we're now drawing 59 milliamps okay and on the right hand channel it's such a tiny amount of current it's not even registering that's brilliant that's what we want that's not going to load down the microcontroller at all let me just switch this one off and you'll see okay now you heard the relay click off there you don't hear it click on because it's too quick but um there's a little delay um when i switch it off so so look at that um bottom left hand corner again at the amps and there we're up so that's now switching, and uh, and that's great. That's exactly what we want to see. And if I kill the power to the um, to the uh, base of the transistor, there we are. It's switched off again. And just for completeness' sake, I've uh, breadboarded the entire schematic. So this is uh, simulating both of those switching uh, relays now, and um, I'm just going to show you first of all what we've got here let's just put this down here okay and uh, if i switch on the bias now you see 115 milliamps because you've got two of them in circuit and uh, just in case you're in any doubt at all i'm going to do one final experiment okay so we're going to do an actual continuity test now on the on the pins that the RF will be flowing through. So at the moment I've not applied any bias just the main 5 volts is on but there's no bias so uh, we're unswitched. Okay I've got the multimeter set to uh, continuity and this I'm uh, going to put the uh, the ground black probe on the input and Okay, that's the normally closed, which it is, because there's no power applied, and nothing there. And if I do the same over here, yeah, nothing there. But if I switch the bias on, which I now have, and I do the same thing, no, nothing at all on the normally closed. What about the, yeah, now we're open. Nothing there. Yeah, so the switch is working. Well, here is the finished thing. Let me just set this down for a moment and uh, get some focus going. That's marvellous. And uh, so you'll see uh, at, the, at the top is my original 15 metre bandpass filter. And at the bottom is the one I built, looks pretty similar, uh, for 10 metres. And now I've got all the switching circuitry there as well. So uh, if I can kind of zoom in a bit, you might be able to see. So in the middle, you'll see those two 10K resistors. Those are the biasing resistors for the transistors. And the transistors have actually been glued onto the side of the relays. Uh, if I come around here, you might be able to see this one a little bit better. You can see that I've bent the leads down. So that's the emitter that's grounded there. And uh, the collector you'll see is... Uh, up here hanging on the uh the, the the earth end the ground end of the relay and the base is bent forward and is connected to that uh that 10k resistor there and and actually then the 10k resistors are actually going by uh, another lead by this um kind of stripey lead which is uh, going to go to the arduino and uh yeah so um i put that together and uh we're gonna see now uh how it actually works well let me show you what we have got set up here so 
here is the switchable bandpass filters and uh, same kind of arrangement as before. So what I've got um, now they're connected with proper uh, BNC connectors into the uh, spectrum analyzer here and uh, you'll be able to see uh, uh, as well in another window on your screen what uh, what the spectrum analyzer uh, is saying. Um, and in terms of the power, the main power are these black and red cables here, which go all the way down here, down to here. And as you'll see, uh, that is on, but it's drawing no power because there's no bias on there yet. And the bias, of course, is uh, coming on these different coloured wires here. So... Um, if you um, can just observe the the separate screen and and look at what you're seeing on the screen, so without any bias on, uh, what we're looking at, of course, is the uh, the 21 megahertz signal, a 15 meters bandpass filter. Um, it is in effect. So I'm now just going to trip this and um, apply the bias and there we go and you can see there um, quite clearly uh, that it's switching just fine so there's the 10 meter bandpass filter take the bias off back to the 15 meter and uh, you see i've got a couple of markers there so you can see that when the 10 meter uh, bandpass filter is uh, not in use um, you look at about minus, well, minus 55 dB um, at 28.9 megahertz. And, uh, and as soon as I flip it, then you'll see uh, that goes right up to uh, nearly 20 dB, minus 20. And the 15 meter one uh, goes down to, uh, to, to minus 50. So you get in about 30 dB uh, uh, difference then which is is excellent so yeah my bandpass filters are indeed switching so there you are the bandpass filters are switching way <laughs> now i'm aware i haven't given you the full story here because the final piece of the jigsaw of course is getting that bias that i've been using the power supply to provide thus far the bias provided by the Arduino itself. And I'm going to save that for probably the next video when I think we're going to be looking at the multifunction VFO, the variable frequency oscillator. So that will be an SI5351 powered by an Arduino, which will do that and quite a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, including switching the filter. So I'll be able to show you the code and make that available and uh, you'll be able to tinker around with that yourself if you wish. So I hope you found this interesting and uh, thanks ever so much for watching and uh, I'll catch you again on the next video. But until then, uh, look after yourselves. Bye-bye. 73.